Hello and welcome to the Reef Talk Extra channel. Now, today I'm going to be installing a Red Sea reef mat in a small tank. Uh, the tank is about two foot by two foot, so it's roughly the size of a Red Sea Reefer 200XL. Uh, I would just about class it as a nano tank, but it's probably a bit on the top end of that. But the point is, it's got a small sump and the Red Sea Reef mat is quite a big old girl. So I'm going to show you that one, it can be done. Two, I'll show you what the process is of installing it is like. Uh, and three, I'll show you that while it can be done, there are of course some compromises in terms of space. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Now on this sump, this is a Waterbox Frag 55.2 and I needed to remove baffles before I got started. Now I did this before the Red Sea baffle removal kit came out, so I used a scalpel. I'm not gonna show you the whole process, but basically what I tried to do was get a scalpel blade between the two panes of glass and strip out all the silicon. It did take quite a lot of time. It took me about two hours from start to finish, and I found the key was just to be patient. Sometimes you have to go over the same piece of silicon 10 or 15 times over the course of about 10 minutes, but it absolutely can be done. And the Red Sea baffle removal kit looks like it makes the whole process a lot easier. So now here we are in the sump and stage one is to remove the skimmer and make space. Now removing a skimmer of course is not particularly difficult. You will notice that the auto top off comes on, which I forgot to turn off. So I turn that off and I just pull the skimmer out completely and put it in a bucket that I had next to me. It was really handy having a bucket right there for any wet stuff and also a towel to clean up any spills. Then we get straight into putting the reef mat in. Now the reef mat comes in two parts. This part is the bucket, the main section, which is where the fleece roll goes. The second part is the head, which just has the motors that turn around. The first thing you'll notice is, of course, it's quite big, but also that corrugated tube right there, that doesn't flex very tight. So although you might look at the dimensions of the unit itself and think it fits in your sump, you've got to bear in mind the corrugated tube sticks out quite far. Now you could just silicon a 90 degree elbow onto that to make it smaller, but just be aware it is a bit of a tight squeeze. And the other thing to say at this point is that you can connect the corrugated pipe to either side and it has the same connection on the left as it does on the right. Now, as you can see, I took the very scientific approach to measuring the correct length of the pipe, held it roughly against the downpipe, and then took a bloody great knife to it. Basically, I didn't want an absolute ton of spare corrugated tube all over the place because it's quite rigid, so it would push the unit if there's too much of it, and in any event, it would just get in the way. The next stage is to attack the connector, and this is the part that screws into the corrugated pipe and then slides over your main drain. It's important that this goes over the main drain because of course that's where most of the water comes in, and because of the design, as with most of these filter rollers, you can only attach it to one drain, so that means that any water that goes down your emergency drain won't go through the fleece roller. Now Red Sea provides a small tube of silicon, but I use stuff that I have lying around, and this is really important. In fact, what I realized is that I've got to silicon both ends. So I took the connector off and put silicon around the screw thread that goes into the corrugated pipe, and I put quite a liberal amount on. Really, you shouldn't put too much on, but it's far better to put too much on than too little, and you can always smooth it around and spread it. And the point really here is that you want to cover the entire thing so there are no gaps. And you do that, of course, to create an airtight seal. And because that part of the plumbing is out of the water, if you don't have an airtight seal, it will draw in air, and air mixes with water to create bubbles, so you'll get bubbles inside your reef mat. Now I had an absolute ton left over, so I just smushed a load all over the place on the outside. This is a very inelegant way of doing it, but ultimately, I can tell you now this has been up and running for a while, it worked a treat. I then put silicon on the inside and that is the part that connects to your main downpipe. Now this is a little bit off camera, but you get the idea. It's basically smothering a ton of the stuff on and then smoothing it in gently with your finger to make sure you cover absolutely every inch so you're creating an airtight seal. Now I actually didn't do this when I first set up my first reef mat and I did get a load of bubbles in the, uh, in the filter unit itself. So it's definitely worth doing this and it's not a stage you want to skip. Now the camera here is sitting where my downpipe is, which you can just about make out on the right. And all you need to do, it should be the exact same measurement. You need to check your dimensions, of course, but it should just slide over. You push it on, it's a push fit connection, and then the silicon will hold it in place anyway. And it's as easy as that. There really are no great plumbing skills required here. And you are capable of doing this if you are able to push one pipe over another. 
Then we need to install the second part, which is the uh, the head. So this is what holds the motors and the, uh, the unused and used fleece. So you just snap it on and it clicks in place really easily. Then you need to put the motor on and a couple of other bits on. So the motor clips on with this little red clip really easily. Again, you can put it on either side. You just need to tell the app when you set it up which side it's on. And then you put the spools on. The spool nearest to the camera is where the used filter roll goes. And the spool farthest away from the camera, closest to me, is where the new unused spool goes. If you need to know which way around the connectors go, you can look at the pictures on the box. It's really, really simple though, and any idiot can do it. The new roll then threads through the center of the spool on the other side. Uh, it is a little bit fiddly, especially if you get the filter floss wet, but it's really quite simple and it should only take a few seconds. And as you can see, it was at this point I realized I needed to take out the main basket. To do that, you just twist it 180 degrees and then it slides out really easily. It is a little bit of a tight squeeze in there, so you do need to give it a bit of a wiggle, but you shouldn't need to force it and it should just come out naturally. Now I filmed this part a few months ago, so at the end of this video, I will show you the process of replacing the roll and I'll show you it much closer than this. But basically you clip the basket over the new roll, slide the basket down into the main bucket, give it a 180 degree twist again so it sits in place. Then you clip a couple of bits back on. There's a little spool guy that goes on at the front where I'm sitting. You put the new roll back in place, clip the handle back down, and Bob's your uncle. Now you do have to turn that a little bit, but I'll come on to that in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to install the uh, water sensor. Now this is a conductivity sensor. It's really important that you get it the right, right way around. And you can see I'm putting it at the back and you have to push it down. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but you push it down, click it into place, and it should go in nice and easily. The connection for the conductivity sensor then needs to go into the back of the drive unit. And doing this blind is a little bit fiddly, but there is a notch at the top, so you can just about see which way up it goes. And once you know that, it should click into place nice and easily. And there's a screw thread on it with a bit of a rubber gasket, so that should keep it watertight and stop any humidity or salt getting into the connectors. The second connector you need to attach is the power supply, so I put the plug all the way around the back, and again, this should slot in nice and easily. Click it goes into place, and once you've done that, again, there's a little spinny connector that has a rubber gasket, so it keeps it nice and dry, which makes it safe to be in a sump. So now on to finalizing this, and I can never remember which way the, uh, the spool is supposed to turn, but as you can see, you just need an inch or so spare on one side, and it turns all the way around and eventually it grips it, and it's at this point that I realize I've done it the wrong way around. I'm just using the manual advance buttons on the, on the side of the unit. So I then press the button that turns it the other way around. And this time you can see I get it the correct way around. And when it gets all the way through to the top, it grips the filter roll and then pulls it through. And once you've done that, that is absolutely everything. It is now installed and all you need to do is set it up on the app. Now setting it up on the app is really easy. So I'm not gonna show you that full process, but let's take a look at how the reef mat sits in the sump. The skimmer to the right is a Deltec 400i, so it's quite a small skimmer, but it does fit, albeit quite snugly. And if I'm honest, it does make removing the skimmer cup a little bit more awkward, but ultimately it does still fit. And there's even a bit of space to the left of the unit for a small phosphate reactor, so while the reef mat absolutely dominates this small sump, it does fit and it fits much better than I thought it might. So how often do you need to change the roll then? Based on the data I've accrued over the three months or so that this roller mat has been up and running and the nine months that my other roller mat has been up and running is that on my main tank, which is a four foot by two foot by two foot SPS dominated tank crammed full of fish and which I feed three cubes of frozen food per day. I use about 64 centimeters of fleece per day, which means that a roll will last around 44 days or six weeks. Whereas on the tank I've set up today, I feed less than a cube of frozen per day. I only have three fish, very few corals. And on that tank, I use about 14 centimeters per day, which means that a roll will last 200 days or about six months. And the other key benefit of the reef mat is how easy it is to change a roll. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the full unedited process so you can see exactly what's involved and just how quick it is. So you lift that and pull that down out of the way. That then rests in there nicely. These clip there. In fact, this needs to come out of the way as well. This little guide thing, uh, which I'll put down here. Uh, these then clip down and this slides out. But let's roll the whole filter mat on there, rest of the roll. There we go. 
Now this part on some filter rollers is really difficult getting the old bit off. On my old X filter it was a bit of a faff, but on this you just unscrew one in there, pop that off, and then give it a bit of a tug. It is stuck onto it, so there you do lose a little bit like that. There you go. But that's it, it's done, it's off. Then you need to put this back in place, if I can remember which way around that goes, like that, and screw the cap on the end, and that is now in place there. Right, that's that out of the way. <laughs> Next step is to put the new roll on. So here's the new roll, let me just unwrap it. Okay, right. I also need to take this old bit off, so I'll just get rid of that. You unscrew that end. Whoop. That whole thing pops off and that slides off easily. Do I need to put that back on? Yes, I do. Which way around does this go? The new roll then goes on. Whoop, I don't drop it. New roll goes on there, like that. And which way around does that go? Can I remember? Yes, I can. That all goes back in place. The cog goes on the outside because of course it ties in with the motor. Tighten that up nicely, there we go. Press that back in there. Then you need to get the central locking mechanism out. So you put your arm in, you twist it 180 degrees, and out she comes. Uh, this is actually looking quite clean on my main tank, on my other tank, it gets a bit dirty, this stuff clogs up, so I normally give this a bit of a rinse under the tap, but this is looking all right. Now, this has to go this way around, so it pops out at the front. Must go out that way. Let's pop that out of the way down here. And pull the new roll through. Feed it through the center of the other roll mounting thing. There you go, it comes out there. I can never remember which way around this goes. I did actually make a note on here, and I think it's that way, but let's have a look. It is, look, I put a little arrow on there to show me that it goes that way. So let's pull that through. Pull that through there, and I just want to lock it in place, basically. So there we go, so that is turned now around like that. Then you want to put the bottom part underneath the filter, top part over the top. Of the new roll, it just clicks in place, and that's it basically. You just need to push this back down there into the main unit. When it gets to the bottom, 180 degree turn again, and basically we're there. If I can remember where I put that little red thing, <laughs> there it is. There's that clip that goes back in place. That goes up there, clip those back on, done. Now if you've got any questions or if there's anything I've missed, chuck them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.